So hi guys and uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, today is a really exciting day. Finally, my R3 has arrived and my lens and also um, one of the adapter rings. Um, it's taken, as many of you know, about sort of four, four and a half months now and finally um, I'm in receipt of it. So here it is, the Canon R3. Um, and this is just gonna be a basically an unboxing video today, um, just going through what's inside, my first impressions of if it's feel and look really. Same with the uh, the lens and also the adapter as well. So for the people that aren't Canon users, uh, Nikon, Olympus, Leica, um, you know, all those sort of people, if you're not interested, then this is probably not for you. But uh, for the hardcore Canon users out there that want to see what's inside, and if they're thinking about getting an R3, um, stick with it and we'll um, we'll go through it. But this is the first time I've actually taken them out of the, the uh, transit packaging, and this is the first time I've actually opened the box. So here we go. Oh, straight away, it's the Canon strap, which I pretty much never use. Um, little bag there with the eyepiece, uh, Canon manual, most of it's online now, but there's a basic manual there. Straight in, and here we go, it's the Canon camera itself, the R3, we'll go through that in a moment. Take some of this packaging out. Let me go in the bottom. And here we have the AC adapter for the camera battery charger. We've got a USB-C there with some clips. And we've got the Canon, I've stuck with the LPE19 battery, which I had in my um, 1DX Mark II. Uh, and thankfully I kept a couple of my spare batteries when I sold my outfit so I could use these in the R3. So that saved me a few quid there. I think it's about 160 quid a piece. So uh, quite a lot of money. And last but not least, we've got the standard battery charger probably there. It's just a standard Canon battery charger um, with two little covers there just to keep things protected. So that's what's in the box basically, not a massive amount. And now we'll just go into um, the first impressions of the camera. So here we go, quite a, a tense moment for me. It's the first time I've actually seen one. Wow. Absolutely lovely. So there we have the R3 itself. And you know what it strikes me straight away is how similar this is to um, the 1D bodies. Now this isn't placed as Canon's flagship at the moment. The flagship is the 1DX Mark III still. And this is placed between the 1DX Mark III and the R5. Um, but it feels like a, a 1D um, body um, because of the the lack of battery grip accessory at the bottom, which I've never liked. It's a weak point. Weather gets in, never that keen on the battery grips. I've got one and had them on previous cameras and I just love all in one. And I love the fact that it's got a good solid battery there that lasts a long time. Um, but straight away, a lot of the buttons on the back, I won't go through too much, but you've got menu buttons there. You've got your, um, your AF on buttons, which is slightly a lot bigger. And you've got, looks like you've got a little sensor on there in the bottom for the, for the sort of portrait landscape orientation. Um, LAN, zoom, and um, also the, uh, the trash can button there, the LAN button, on and off switch. Um, yeah, it all, and the Q button there, it all seems quite, um, you know, um, familiar to me really. Um, but the weight, I mean, the weight of this straight away, it feels so light. And I think this, this actually weighs in as it is at the moment without the memory card and battery and about 868, I think it is. Um, so with the battery fitted and the memory card fitted, both SD and the CF card, um, this actually weighs lighter than the R5 with battery and grip. So uh, how on earth they've managed to do that? And I don't think it's by an awful lot, but it is lighter. Um, but straight away, it just feels so familiar for me really. I mean, you've got the depth of field preview buttons at the front. You've got another button down the bottom. I don't, or a cap there with something underneath it. It looks like a, a remote control accessory there. So they've taken that away from the side now and put it there, which is probably a lot better. Um, the viewfinder, the eyepiece itself, I mean, straight away, that looks totally different. It's very bulbous at the back. Um, the optic adjuster there is still there. Um, you know, it, it 
it's very familiar, as I said, but it, there's a lot of new stuff on it that, um, you know, especially with the, on as you look at the top there, you've got a very small screen there, which the other one was quite a lot bigger. And you've got the mode button there, which is, feels kind of nice. Everything feels, my, my hand and my fingers migrate to every button, really. It just seems very intuitive. And the biggest thing at the moment, I think, is certainly the, the touch screen at the back. So that's a articulated screen there, it flips out, and you can flip that that way, and then you can flip that back in there. So it's effectively like the previous model. And that will help with video and all sorts of stuff, really. A really nice feature to have. Um, and it looks all completely weatherproof there. Absolutely lovely. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, getting to grips with it. What else have we got? Right, so manual, manual function button there, manual fu function button there, which is obviously you do for changing your focus points, etc. And there's probably a host of other things that does. Um, and one thing that I have noticed straight away is the hot shoe at the top, totally different design now. And I think this is the first camera with this design. I don't think the R6 and R5 have that. Um, but this is for the new accessories that Canon are bringing out. So they're also bringing out some, um, some of the microphone systems that Canon are bringing out. And I don't think they exist as yet. But uh, yeah, so far it looks amazing. So you've got two slots there. So that's your compact flash and your SD. And they take the most current um, CF cards, um, the fastest ones, and they are very expensive. I think I paid, it should have been 450 pound for a 256 gigabyte. And I think I paid 300 odd pounds. It was on special offer. And I've got the fastest SD card in there as well. I would like to have seen the two um, CF fast cards in there. Um, but uh, they've obviously done the SD maybe for ease of use for, for maybe um, news agencies and stuff like that for ease of use everywhere has SD um, plugs that you can put in on computers and stuff, but they don't have compact flash. So maybe it was for that reason, but, uh, but still, um, I think that's pretty much it on the body itself. Standard things at the side there, you've got the mic, the USB, HDMI, headphones, flash, and your network ethernet adapter there, which I never really use. But um, yeah, it'd be interesting. This is um, Bluetooth and um, iPhone compatible and everything else. So, you know, it'd be nice to see all that functionality. But yeah, first impressions really feels solid. It feels weatherproofed and it just feels like a camera I've had for ages. It just feels well well known to me. It just, and the, I love the new design of the grip. I've got to mention that this bubbling effect and this new sort of non-slip grip thing is, feels lovely. I mean, it really, it's all really important about what the camera actually does, but the look of it, yeah, it looks fantastic. It really does. Um, but that pretty much it guys for, for the first impressions and a first look at the Canon R3. Um, I will be putting this through um, some field tests and some image tests as well. Um, you know, I've got to spend a little bit of time to get used to it myself rather than fumbling around in the field. And I've also got the, uh, the new uh, lens as well to put on that. And we're gonna go through um, a couple other purchases I made next. But um, yeah, if you've got any questions, guys, anything you want to add, um, please do. And if you use the R3 and you've got any tips for me, um, please, you know, let me know. Uh, I, I really can't wait to get to get this out in the field really and put it for its paces. You know, it's very, very exciting. And this is the first camera I've ever, ever bought um, from new. I've always bought um, secondhand cameras. So I saved up my hard earned money and my trade in stuff. Um, and purchase this, the lens and the adapter. So, you know, it, it's quite special for me, really. This is, you know, going to be exciting. And uh, yeah, can't wait to get it out there. So here, guys, we have the Canon RF 100 f4.5 to 7.1 LIS USM. Um, this is kind of like a replacement for my 100 to 400, which was my go-to lens. And I, I really went out on a limb to get this one. You know, I was squeezing the, uh, the funds a little bit to get it, but um, it was one of those things where I've just bought that 500 Mark II, which is gonna be an excellent lens paired with the R3 and the 1.4 Mark III um, teleconverter. But this really go-to travel light, um, lens with that extra reach will be great. I mean, it's a f7.1, which is maybe not great in low light um, situations, but um, you know, I've heard great things about it. So let's get into it and open it up and see what's inside. 
So straight away, just your usual Canon gubbins, warranty card, this polystyrene cover. Polystyrene cover there again. Let's tease that out, put that back in. Okay, so straight away, this is standard um, zoom pouches you get with a little bit of remodernization there. Looks quite new and up to date. Velcro fastener at the top. Yeah, we've got a little, little strap there to carry it if you want to carry it that way, but I'll probably never use this. This usually stays in, uh, in the cupboard. So straight away, and it comes, nothing else in there. Okay, so outer packaging. Cool, there's a nice bit of weight to it, but not too much. Um, yeah, really nice. So, so straight away, yeah, it's, it's familiar. It's been completely redesigned this from, from the old EF series. Um, a different little knurled handle, a very nice, smooth, lovely looking um, foot there. Um, so three modes of IS, stabilizer on and off, AF and MF, um, manual focus and auto, and full, um, and three meters to infinity button there. Smooth and tight there, same again. I think this is possibly loose. Yeah, so there's quite a zoom on it. Well, straight away, feels very smooth rather than, so that's the twist mechanism, like the EF 100 to 400, um, manual focus ring at the back. And this is a new thing here. This is, um, I think some of your custom function pieces here, so you don't have to take your eye away from the viewfinder at the back and you can program um, stuff in with that. But um, yeah, straight away, different um, cap here um, and a nice silver finish to that. Um, really, really nice. Oh yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it's lovely. So that's the same thread, I think, 77 millimeters. It feels quite weighty, actually. Um, probably a little bit heavier than my 100 to 400. Bit of polystyrene, a bit of polystyrene. So they've gone rather from the, uh, the old black caps, they've gone for a nice white version and they've got the, still got the hole at the side and that's for your rotation for any of your filters and things um, but that looks pretty pretty self-explanatory to get on yeah nice click what a lovely look to it and there it is full extension well wow, quite a way really a lovely lens um, yeah very very smart yeah and that's pretty much it for the, for the lens itself I mean you know it is it is what it is. I think, you know, there are um, other lenses out there. Um, I mean, I have got the 500, this is 500, but you know, the 500 Mark II F4 Prime is great and has its, you know, has its uses in certain situations. But if I'm going mobile, I want to travel light or I'm stalking with this, you know, this is a lot easier to cart around um, and in good light as well. It should yield some, some very, very good images. And um, yeah, this is uh, my only and first RF lens, um, but it feels the quality, it just, the whole body itself and the whole smooth finish of this, unlike the old lenses which were all a bit bubbly and rough, it just, it does feel very, very smart and very, very smooth. Um, and actually, you know, it, there's a bit of weight there. And I think because of the lighter um, R3 body, you know, with a little bit of weight, with that extra 100 millimeters, it's gonna have a little bit more weight to it. But uh, yeah, no, no, really nice. I think that's pretty much it for the lens itself. I think this is fully removable, the collar. Um, but yeah, happy days. And that's the opening the box of the Canon RF 100 to 500, F4.5 to 7.1 LIS. So guys, as well, um, I also purchased this control ring mount adapter for the um, EF EOS-R. 
Now this isn't the standard adapter, this is about £120 more. Um, I got it on a good deal, so I, I bit the bullet and got this one. I could have got the basic one, um, but I decided to get this one because of the functionality. I don't know an awful lot about it. So you've got the standard little gubbins there, the card, nice bit of bubble wrap. Now again, another little pouch, little pouch it comes in, little black pouch, another little bag. Quite past the parcel this. And there we have it, quite straightforward. Control ring mount adapter, Canon. Now what it has, it has this, if you can hear that. Now that's custom functions there. So again, like it has on the 100 to 500, you can custom function that. So when you're looking through the viewfinder and you can use this at the front, get your hand around the front, use that. And then it just allows you to custom function it so you don't have to take your eye away and miss the shot. Um, and I think that's, it's, you know, a considerable amount more money really just for that extra bit of functionality. But, um, you know, I thought, well, why not? And could be a bit gimmicky, but we'll see. And again, when I get out in the field, when I've tried this and tested it a bit, we're going to do a bit more of a in-depth review on the, the one to five and the R3. And we'll see how this works with custom functions. But thanks guys um, for, for tuning in. Not for all. I can uh, appreciate that. But um, for me, a very happy day. And finally, um, I've got my kit back and I can get out there and start um, getting amongst it, really. I've got loads and loads planned this year. I'm off to the lakes this month with the family. Uh, I'm off to Aviemore in Scotland in April, and I'm back again in Scotland in uh, a bit later on. And I've got Exmoor in May as well. So uh, yeah, I've got loads going on and loads of other projects. So uh, anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, really appreciate it. And hopefully next will be uh, a test of the R3 and the one to five. In a, in a real life situation um, with some birds um, locally, hopefully, and we'll see how we get on. But uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. <laughs>